Released by Konami in 1998 on the Sony PlayStation, Suikoden 2 would be a direct sequel to the original game taking place after three years. Written and directed by series creator Yoshitaka Murayama, this would be the original tale the creator wanted to tell when designing the Suikoden story. For story, the game features a young man named Ryo and his friend Joey, alongside 107 stars of destiny that are recruitable, though only 40 are actually able to be used for battle, and the rest are there for support or story reasons. For gameplay, the game reuses the three different battle formats of the original of standard battles with six party members, 1v1 duels, and massive army battles done in a turn-based grid format, though each mode has improved animations or expanded options. Characters now have an elemental affinity to affect the effectiveness of runes they equip, and can now equip three runes to themselves, and in most cases, another to their individual weapon, though the MP pool is shared among all characters in combat. Introduced are more minigames to diversify the gameplay, including a robust competitive cooking side quest. The game also allowed the player to import save data from the first game, so recurring characters can have improved levels and stats, and the hero tier from the first game can be recruited. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. In the year 460 IS, the game begins in the camp of the Royal Highland Army's Unicorn Brigade, as two young soldiers, childhood friends Ryo and Joey, switch shifts during the Night Watch. That night, the camp is hit by a surprise attack. Their captain Rode informs them the attackers are from the city-state of Jostin, breaking the peace treaty between them and the Highland Kingdom. The camp is surrounded, and the order is given to flee, though after doubling back, Ryo and Joey discover the captain was actually working with Prince Luca of Highland to lead the fleeing brigade into an ambush and get slaughtered, and blaming the attack on Jostin. Luca Blight, valuing power, disagrees with the alliance with the city-state, opting to take things into his own hands to break things up. They are spotted by Rode, who aims to silence them, and cornered, they mark an X to signify their meeting spot if they ever get separated, and opt to lead down a cliffside waterfall to be carried away by the raging current. Coming to, Ryu is alone and rescued by Victor and Flick from the first game, who are now leading a band of mercenaries working for Jostin. He is taken prisoner and made to do work for the mercenaries, though after a few days, Joey sneaks in to try and free him. They fail to escape, but explain the nature of the attack by Luca to Victor and Flick, who mull it over. Joey then leads another escape, succeeding this time, and the duo head to the nearby village en route to their way home. Meeting a traveling band of entertainers, Eileen, Rena, and Bulgan, they agree to travel together. Rena has an adult conversation with the guards to let them pass the mountains, and they work together to beat a mist monster on their way. Making it back to their home village of Kiaro, they part ways with the troop, as Ryo's sister Nanami is thrilled to see Ryo again after news spread after the attack. Captain Rode now arrives to arrest Ryo on charges of being a Jostin spy, while at the same time Joey's father disowns him as he's also arrested. Rode reveals Luca has ambitions for Highland, and sacrificing the Unicorn Brigade to rile up the people against Jostin is simply part of it. Now the group is to be publicly executed as spies to that effect, and as they pass Princess Jillia, Joey remarks how they never betrayed the kingdom, but the kingdom betrayed them. Right as they're about to be executed, Victor and Flick dash in to save them, though it seems like Nanami needs no saving herself. They make it back to the mercenary fortress, though Ryo and Joey are given more trust and access now, even being permitted to find new recruits to join them. They visit Toto Village, where they meet the family that found Joey and nursed him to health, and do a favor for their daughter Pilika. However, when they return, they are shocked to find the entire town burned down, and one of the survivors is Apple from the first game, who tells them it was Luca Blight and his army. She has the group take her to Victor and Flick, and lets them know Luca's army is mobilizing against Jostin, and this town was just a warm-up. Given his route, this mercenary fort is next in his path. As they prepare for Luca's warpath, they see Luca himself destroying the next village in his path, taking his time to personally slaughter townsfolk himself. At this point, Ryo and Joey decide to pledge themselves to Victor and Flick's mercenaries, and after proving himself in a duel, Ryo was given command of his own company. While doing their best to defend against the armies of Luca, Luca outmaneuvers them, and the fortress is lost. Getting away from Luca himself by the skin of their teeth, they escape back to Toto Village, and Pilika leads them back to a shrine there, where a strange power summons forth Ryo and Joey. Asira speaks to them, introducing herself as Leknot, the holder of the gate rune and keeper of the gates between worlds. She imparts that one of the 27 true runes has acknowledged them, the rune of beginning, and they can now claim the power to decide fate going forward, but at the cost of great misery. Tempted by the power, Joey doesn't hesitate to claim the black sword rune, and in turn Ryo gains the bright shield rune, both being halves to the rune of beginning. As they look to reunite with Victor, they explore some ancient Sandarian ruins, and with some shenanigans to enter the city of Muse to rejoin Victor. He introduces them to Annabelle, the mayor of Muse, who actually recognizes Joey from his former noble family, and Ryo and Nanami by their adopted grandfather Genkaku. 
Annabelle's aide informs them Luca's army is camped nearby and poised to attack, and asks Rio and Joey to do some risky recon work dressed as Youth Brigade soldiers. Sneaking in, things seem to go smoothly, until they're spotted by Rode, who sounds the alarm immediately. They duck into a tent that turns out to be the royal family's tent, currently occupied by Princess Jillia, who curiously cooperates and covers for their escape, even knowing they are enemy spies. As she serves them tea, she remembers Joey from the execution day, revealing that she knows her brother Luca is up to something evil with expanding this war, though a struggle to think of a way to stop him. Once things have quieted down, they flee, but Rode spots them again, figuring the princess was opposing Luca. Joey offers to buy Rio time to escape and hold off the guards, calling on the Black Sword Rune to give him enough power to hold the line. Escaping back to Muse, Annabelle and her aide thank Rio for getting them information from the camp, but don't commit to saving Joey in return, infuriating the group. Forced to wait and pray, Rio, Nanami, and Pilika are relieved to see Joey limping back to town after all. A week passes as the five state cities of Jostin have a conference to determine their stance on Highland, but political bickering blocks any progress and they're all soon alerted that Luca's forces killed Muse's border guard and have begun their march. At first, reinforcements arrive to aid in slowing down Luca's vanguard, but internal politics from the force from Matilda leave Muse stretched thin. That night, Joey makes a shady deal with someone, and the next day, Rio and Anami go to see Annabelle to learn more about their grandfather from her. They walk into witnessing Tinto's mayor refusing to cooperate with the resistance against Luca, and so they're asked to return again that night. Rio later catches Joey again in some shady talks, and that night when they try to talk to Annabelle again, they learn Joey's already there. As it turns out, Joey has calmly informed Annabelle that he is here to kill her, and she doesn't go down without a fight. Rio and Nanami enter as Joey has struck her down, and he flees right as Annabelle's aide comes in to inform her someone has let in Highland forces, now assuming Rio has killed her. As she dies, Annabelle apologizes to Rio for how the state treated their grandfather, but the siblings are soon forced to flee. The plan is now to escape to the city of South Window, as the two of them flee with Pelika in tow. Running into Ailey, Rena, and Bolgan again, they charter a boat to sail south and meet up with Victor, who seeks to gather allies down here as well. He takes on a job to investigate a case of missing girls from North Window, and it turns out to be the work of Necklord, a vampire Victor thought he destroyed in the first game. Seeking the Star Dragon Sword with which to defeat Necklord, they also encounter a vampire hunter seeking the same goal, who knows of Necklord's doppelganger secret and can help seal it. Earning the cooperation of the sword again, Victor fights past the mental manipulations of Necklord, though the vampire gets away from now. As they leave, they see the rest of the group waiting outside for them, as they hear the dismal news that now South Window has fallen to Highland as well. Deflated, they want to make a stand, but know they don't have a strategy to win. Apple then speaks up that she knows of a brilliant strategist named Shu in the nearby town of Raddit, and though he isn't easily convinced, Apple's persistence and will moves his heart and changes his mind, though he too knows of Ryo's rune and his foster grandfather Genkaku. Now acting as main strategist for the resistance, Shu quickly formulates a plan to halt the advance of the Highland army. Selecting Ryo as the leader of the team assigned to quickly flank and target the enemy general, the shrewdness of Shu forces back the Highland army for a much needed victory for North Window and the failing city states. Shu then elects to consolidate power here and position Ryo as the leader of the new state army, that with Ryo's inspiring influence as well as Shu's military genius, they stand a real chance at victory. He also reveals that Ryo is not only the son of Genkaku, the old war hero of the city-states, but also bears the bright shield rune just as Genkaku did. Ryo takes some time to think about bearing such a responsibility, and that night Victor invites Ryo to hear what Annabelle didn't get the chance to say about Genkaku. About 30 years ago, the Highlands and States were engaged in war with each other, as Annabelle's father Daryl led the state, and a man named Han Cunningham led the Highland forces. Daryl wasn't an effective leader, but a man named Genkaku rose quickly in the ranks of the state army as a war hero, and as it turned out, he and Han were friends formerly from the same village. Together they met and decided this war was foolish, and arranged a peace treaty between the two forces, though Daryl's stubbornness dragged out the war regardless. The King of Highland, Agaris Blight, suggested the war be decided by a duel between champions, and Daryl agreed, and it came down between a duel between Han and Genkaku. However, during the duel, Genkaku refused to fight suddenly, and so Highland won the war, also gaining the town of Kiaro in the exchange. Labeled as a traitor, Genkaku was exiled from the states by Daryl, though it would eventually come out that Daryl handed Genkaku a poisoned sword to cheat in the duel. Genkaku noticed this and refused to draw his blade against his friend in this Catch-22, as even if he won, he would have been exiled for cheating regardless. When this betrayal by Daryl became public knowledge, Genkaku's name was cleared, but he still never returned to the States, as by this time Genkaku was living a quiet life in Kiaro, adopting and raising Ryo and Nanami. 
After this tale, Victor reminds Ryo he's his own man, not just Genkaku's son, and the next day, Ryo agrees to lead the Alliance army and fight to defeat Luka Blight's invasion. All of a sudden, the Cirrus Leknot appears before them, announcing that the Stars of Destinies are set to begin gathering again, and grants Ryo the Stone Tablet of Promise to try to supporters, though mentions his road forward and Joey's will be difficult ahead. Luke from the first game is back to support Ryo's effort as a messenger from the nearby town of Two River named Fitcher comes in to investigate the leader of the new alliance. Recruiting more allies and heading to Two River City, they walk in on a plot to sow dissension between the human and non-human residents, as Hyland offers a peace treaty to the humans of Two River, and the Kobolds and Wingers suspect treachery. The suspicion is justified, as Hyland launches a sneak attack on the humans of Two River regardless, though fortunately only to be curbed by the Wingers and Kobolds banding together for their home, and stalling for enough time for Ryo's forces to flank and drive back Hyland. Meanwhile, we see Luka with his War Council, punishing the failure to defeat the New Alliance army with death, as he turns his attention now to Green Hill. To replace his executed general, Joey is present to volunteer for the task, to which Luka agrees to test him with the capture of Green Hill. Joey agrees, and by the time even Ryo returns to his stronghold, word has already reached that Green Hill has fallen to a shockingly small force. Ryo's forces are not positioned to retake the city yet, but for now seek to rescue the leader from Highland. Since Green Hill is zoned as a college town, the group moves fast to send a force of those young enough to pose as students. Undercover, they find internal forces aiding the former leader in hiding, Teresa, and learn Highland returned the captured soldiers from Muse. At first, it seemed like goodwill, but it soon became apparent it was simply to double the amount of mouths the people would have to feed, and with their forces starving out, the resulting infighting defeated the Green Hill army before any battle of Highland actually took place. Seeing no option for Alliance here, Ryo and Groot make their exit, when they suddenly see Road outside offering a reward for Teresa's capture, and are shocked to see Joey here leading the manhunt. They confront Joey on his joining of Highland, but he declines comment for now, as they hurry to escape with Teresa alive. Joey catches them alone in their escape, warning them not to resist and drag out the war, but also states he won't let Luca have his way with Highland and the city-state. He lets them go, and afterwards, Joey learns that Highland commanders Colgan and Seed feel the same way, in which they love Highland but hate Luca, and swear loyalty to Joey instead. That night, Luca is impressed with Joey's victory, and allows him to name his reward. Joey then makes the bold claim to ask for Princess Jillia's hand in marriage, as well as hear out another plan in private, which Luca surprisingly allows. Back with Ryo, Shu gathers them all to assess the situation, which is that for the city-state, so far, South Window has been destroyed, Muse and Green Hill are being occupied by the enemy, Two River has somehow survived, and Tinto is still closed off. He recommends forging a bond with the last Alliance member left, the Kingdom of Matilda, which boasts an army as big as Muse's. Along the way, he encounters and befriends Vicky, the teleporting mage from the first game as an ally, and meets Miklatov, the soldier that fought alongside them in the Battle of Jostan Hill. He escorts Ryo to Gerudo, the leader of Matilda, who seems unimpressed by Ryo's army and dismisses them just as quickly, refusing to negotiate. The next day, forces from Highland appear on their border, chasing refugees from Muse, and as they all immobilize to help, it turns out Luca Blight is among them. Seeing this, Gerudo decides to abandon the refugees to be slaughtered, and instead maintain defense of his border, greatly frustrating the knightly Miklatov. Afterwards, Miklatov decides to enter Muse on his own to see matters for himself, and joined by Ryo, they are stunned to see a dark malevolent force rise up out of Muse. Beyond, we see Luca gleefully sacrificing the town to the Beast Rune, and recognizing the darkness within Joey that he keeps concealed. Returning back to Matilda with this news, Gorudo is not concerned with any loss of life outside his castle, and appalled, Miklatov resigns from his post, inspiring his friend Camus and half the Royal Knights to do the same, and join Ryo's army in response. Meanwhile, Joey speaks with Luca, who is aware of the attitude of many of his troops towards him, as Joey brings in the tactician Leon from the first game to aid them. Meanwhile, on some recon, Ryo learns of Joey's wedding from the enemy commander, as Highland does not stop in his conquest. Soon enough, Joey is formally knighted and his marriage to the princess is recognized, but during the ceremony, Luca poisons his father the king with the help of Joey, now seizing the throne for himself and scorning his father for the unforgivable weakness shown in the past. One night, when bandits attacked, Luca's father fled and abandoned his wife, Luca's mother, who was captured and raped, resulting in the birth of Jillia, shortly after which the mother died and Luca always hated his father for. As Rio is in a sortie with Highland Commander Kiva and Klaus, Rode deliberately leaves the old guard to die as new orders come in from King Luca. Rode escapes alive, though Rio chooses to capture Kiva and Klaus instead, who change sides once they learn their old king was betrayed and killed by Luca. 
As they reassess their resources, their army now stands at about 25,000 strong, which is roughly the size of one Highland company, of which Highland still has three left of. With no other allies to request aid from, prospects seem grim, but then Sheena from the first game makes an appearance, offering to connect them to his father, the president of the Torin Republic, the former enemy state to Jostin. With literally no other choice, they accept the offer and make the trip to see the president, who agrees on the notion of an alliance to stop Luca. He gives them some troops as aid, as well as Valeria or Kasumi from the first game to command them. Returning to base, they are in time to prepare for the main assault, as Luca is poised to attack their headquarters directly and wipe them out. Luca leads one company, Joey leads a second, and a newcomer from Harmonia named Sasarai leads the third, someone Luke knows very personally. Being now outnumbered over 2 to 1, the strategy for Ryo shifts from a direct battle to targeting Luca directly, as cutting the head will kill the snake, and so the plan is to separate, ambush, and surround Luca with a force of 20,000 soldiers to kill him. When battle comes, they succeed in baiting Luca's platoon out by itself, but despite their plan going off, Luca is inhumanely strong, and it turns out that he's also aided by the infamous Black Knight Uber from the first game. Luke confronts Sasurai on his own, and uses his own true room to drive him away, but despite this, Luka's berserker strength is real. Ryo manages to exchange blows and drive him back, but Luka escapes their trap at a costly loss for Ryo's forces. That night, while treating their wounds, Leon approaches Ryo to give him a letter warning them that Luka will be leading a night raid, and this is their last chance to defeat him. Taking a chance this may also be a trap, Ryo, Victor, and Flick lead their strongest bands to surround Luka at night and indeed catch him off guard. Regardless, Luca's battle prowess is undeniable, as it takes the full coordinated tag team efforts of three groups to take down the tyrant King Luca. Defiant to the end, the Berserker still limps away to escape, shocked at his loss. Shu has a kill zone ready, as archers fire continuously into Luca and his reinforcements, until Luca makes one last lunge at Ryo personally, though the bearer of the bright shield rune emerges victorious in the duel. Laughing till the very end, Luca delights in the knowledge that it took so many just to bring only him down, as he spits on Ryo's goal of peace. As the group lets out a sigh of relief over their unbelievable victory, Joey and Leon are nearby to confirm the kill, glad to see Luca finally put down, per their plan. Afterwards, as Ryo recovers from his exhaustion, Joey's officially married into the Blight royal family and accepts his new title as King of Highland. Colgan is then sent to Rio, bearing a peace treaty from Joey between Highland and the city-state, with the negotiations to take place in Muse. Accepting and arriving promptly, Rio and Joey see each other face to face for the first time in a long time, and Leon presents them with an unexpected ultimatum that they'll be having the city-state surrender unconditionally, else they'll all die here. Joey admits at first it was between him and Luca, but then he found out things are bigger than that without elaborating more. Fortunately, Victor dashes in to rescue them, though Pelika stays behind with Joey, who refuses to shoot Ryo in the back with Pelika witnessing. Making it back to their stronghold, Ryo now hears of activity by Necklord causing trouble again in Tinto. Seeing an opportunity to do them a favor, Victor offers to help Tinto with their undead problem in exchange for Tinto allying with them, now that they've seen Ryo's forces take down the infamous Luka. Later, Ryo and Nanami encounter Necklord, who reveals his plans to turn the whole town into zombies, and while he tries to curse Ryo, his rune blocks the dark magic. Unfortunately, Necklord proves to be too much as they flee, though Ryo collapses soon afterward. He wakes up two days later, as it turns out Tinto has fallen to Necklord, and after finding the two people they need to trap his soul and prevent him from returning, Victor leads a charge against the vampire, burying him once and for all and freeing all hostages. Gaining the gratitude of Tinto and its surviving citizens, they pledge their allegiance to Ryo, as they all return to the stronghold. With the forces of Tinto and what remains of Muse joining under their flag, the Alliance army now grows an additional 7,000 strong. Such numbers now make them a legitimate threat to Highland, to which Shu proposes now making a counteroffensive strike for once, since Highland is gathering forces of Muse, likely to fortify Greenhill. That night, Ryo duels with a deadly assassin named Lucia, but chooses to spare her life after winning. Now preparing to liberate Greenhill on their own, they formulate a plan to split the army and have one force slow down the enemy reinforcements from Muse, while the other engages the enemy in Greenhill. Teresa leads them through a few secret entrances back into the city, where they are intercepted by the Black Knight Uber. They defeat a summoned monster, and the citizens are surprisingly welcome to receive Teresa again as their leader. Mission accomplished, they return home, only to now learn the Knights of Matilda have surrendered to Highland now, as it turns out the play for Greenhill was a distraction for Joey's main army to now take Matilda. Thinking quickly, Apple suggests using the gap in defenses as an opportunity to now take back Muse as well from Highland. As they prepare for the next stage in their campaign, a chance encounter has Ryo meeting Tyr from the first game. 
They team up to save a friend in trouble, and afterwards, Tyr still refuses the seat of President of Torin that he rightfully earned, though old friends come out to greet the wandering hero. Tyr is still a man of few words, but after Ryo's request, the legend from the first game comes to Ryo's aid. Now marching Reclaim Muse, they wonder how much longer this war of theirs will go on, as they spot the assassin Lucia from before and give chase. She leads them directly to Joey, who was waiting for them by himself, and personally asks Ryo again to give up fighting and hide somewhere so the war can end and they won't fight. Unfortunately, the friends find themselves at an impasse, where neither side refuses to back down, as they accept their destinies to fight each other and step away from now. The siege to retake Muse commences, though Klaus finds it awfully suspicious how easily they breach the defenses of the city. Within, they find servants of the Beast Rune running amok, and Luke explains that long ago the priest Sasserai passed the rune down to the Blight family, but it could only be awakened with a blood sacrifice, hence the slaughter and use earlier. Luke believes awakening the Beast Rune will result in a powerful demon being summoned, and to make matters worse, Highland soldiers are approaching earlier than expected, as if their movements here were already predicted. Forced to retreat without taking Muse, they wait as Shu thinks of a new strategy since there are no more options for allies. He informs Ryo the next battle will likely be the last, since neither army can grow anymore and they can't retreat anywhere, so it will likely be literally winner take all. As they brief the army on the battle plan, Shu points out that after taking Matilda, Highland will have 55,000 soldiers, while their own forces are still around 25,000, so direct combat is suicide. Their plan then is to split their army, and send one part led by General Kiba to go directly to their capital city, which will force Highland to split up and defend it. Meanwhile, the rest will attack Matilda where Highland is settled now, where the numbers will then likely be only about 30,000 to 20,000, and victory is possible but very risky. As Ryo cheers on his friends and allies, Leknot now appears to congratulate Ryo on his journey so far of collecting all 108 Stars of Destiny. As such, the Bright Shield rune on Ryo's hand now unseals, radiating awesome new power. For Ryo's army, the plan is to march to Matilda through Green Hill, and in doing so, they meet Joey on the field of battle and manage to best him in the first skirmish with a little trickery. With this momentum, their next target is Rockaxe Castle, the home base of Matilda, which will earn their army a morale victory and force the newly acquired Knights of Matilda to stand down. During the operation, word arrives that General Kiba has fallen in the effort to split Highland's forces, so Ryo and Nanami move quickly ahead to claim the castle as their own party buys them time. Alone, they are shocked to encounter Joey there, waiting for them and ready to duel. He states that the world isn't big enough for Highland and the city-state to exist next to each other, which he realized back during the state meeting in Jostin, where the so-called alliance was a complete sham and full of selfish infighting. Since then, his dream was to bring together all of Highland and the city-states under one mighty nation, born of force and wielding force. Their talk is interrupted as Gerudo walks in and sees an opportunity to kill both Ryo and Joey and take back Matilda. Though Ryo moves to protect them, Nanami steps faster to shield them from arrows and falls over fatally wounded. In fierce retaliation, both Ryo and Joey don't hesitate to team up and challenge Gerudo with lethal intent. With their runes combined, they unleash their fiercest attacks and annihilate Gerudo with their unmatched power. Afterwards, Joey takes his leave to allow Ryo to save Nanami, who collapses from her wounds, as Shu comes in to complete the mission of seizing the castle and tearing Matilda forces out from Highland. Though swallowing the hard loss of Nanami, victory is bittersweet as Highland pulls back to regroup within their own territory, and Shu recognizes this as an opportunity to chase down Highland and finally invade to end this war. Gunning for Highland's capital city now, the next battle pits Highland strategist Leon directly against the Alliance's Shu. Goading Leon into the woods, Shu lights the entire forest on fire and traps Leon's forces within, and among the burning corpses, the two tacticians have a talk, as Shu reveals he's learned to care about others and not view them as tools like his teacher, hence his win. With the way to the capital city now clear, their army marches to the gates of the city and break it down, as Ryo now leads a force to end the fight in the city itself. Defeating Lucia, they then meet Han, the old general who was Genkaku's friend, as he challenges Ryo to finish the duel he started with Genkaku years ago. Winning against the veteran, he collapses before he tells Ryo how he can use the rune he bears to end the war. Meanwhile, Joey senses the end is near, as he says goodbye to Pelika, who has matured enough to accept the loss of another loved one. He calls in Jillia and asks her to take Pelika and escape to Harmonia, where he's prepared a home for them to live in in peace. As Ryo then cuts past Joey's top general, Seed and Colgan, they pause before Leon, who reveals the demonic incantation of the beast rune Luca left behind, and how Luca's intent was to unleash the beast on the entire world. Cutting himself over the rune, he summons forth the terrible demon, and the group is pushed to their limit to put down the supernatural malevolence once and for all. 
Overcoming that trial, they enter the throne room at long last, only to be met with Joey's coat atop an empty throne. Suddenly, the castle itself begins to collapse as Ryo and group hurry to escape the demolition, as the Allied army claims an underdog win to end the war. After a brief rest, the leaders of Two River and Tinto come to Rio, and despite the war being over, the rebuilding must now begin, and the direction of the new country is to be decided. It's not as simple as declaring peace, as Harmonia is still an influence to the north, and Luca took advantage of the mistrust in the city-states and shattered their alliance. Teresa points out the option of a single unified country that can stand together against enemies, and both Two River and Tinto agree, as do the remaining Knights of Matilda and remnants of Muse. The new nation is to be the Dunan Republic, with the capital being Muse, but Rio surprises everyone by refusing the mantle of leadership for the new nation, despite everyone's approval. Victor understands and reminds Rio he always has a home here, and allows Rio to head out on his own. Returning to the spot where he and Joey were first chased to when their camp was burned, he finds Joey there by the waterfall, each finally fulfilling their promise to meet here if they ever got separated. Joey says he doesn't have any regrets, though if he did, it would be that he had to betray Annabelle and assassinate her. He knows he and Rio are so much alike, and they were both aiming for the same goal this whole time, but when Joey was captured and met with Luca, despite hating him, a part of him admired the man for his strength. From that point, he wanted the same strength, and used it to make a nation and protect everyone. He then insists they duel in one final battle, but Ryo refuses to attack his friend, and Joey admits he was also kinda jealous of Ryo, and how everyone always seemed to like him for some reason. He then drops to one knee, looking deathly pale, and explains he had to use his black sword rune to stop Luca's beast rune from surging out, and as it turns out, using his rune by itself kept draining his own life energy every time, so right now, he's actually very close to dying. Suddenly, both runes begin to resonate and Joey's vitality is restored, as Lechnot appears and urges them both to continue living and make the world a better place, despite the sins committed in their past. She was not far behind and understands Ryo's reasons for leaving quietly on his own. He wishes them well and urges Ryo to come back once he's done journeying, but that wasn't the reason for his visit. He reveals that after Nanami fell in Matilda, she actually pulled through and asked Shu to help her fake her death so that she could get away from Ryo for a while. She couldn't handle Ryo's pain or fighting with Joey anymore, and wanted to leave so he would stop sacrificing himself for her sake too. She's actually back in Kiara waiting for him, as Shu takes his leave as Ryo's strategist now. As the game ends, both boys return home to a lively Nanami, and the three travel the world together. Though they would see the results of their choices firsthand, the collected 108 stars of destiny would likewise separate now, as the true Runa beginning would mark the end of this journey. Suicoden 2 has enjoyed the success of selling over 700,000 copies worldwide. This recapitation was chosen by Jesus Beam. Thank you for supporting the show as a patron, your help is always appreciated. If you would like to support the show yourself, please follow the Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next battlefield.